Welcome to our solar electric trailer journey. In today's episode, we are here with our friends and neighbors, Jay and Hilda Meyer, and they live just down the street from us. I am standing with them in their beautiful Class C motor home. And Jay and Hilda eat a very strict kosher diet. And because they're the experts on us, they are going to explain to us how they do that while they RV. Now, I understand that eating a kosher diet, you have to keep food separated, like meat from dairy. How do you do that in the RV? Okay, we'll start with the cupboards. I have D's on dairy, and I have meat on the meat, and then there's a neutral, which is parv, and this is how I keep my parv, just in a dish rack. So it's handy. I can get at it. The uh, dairy is kind of uh, not as neat, but I have everything here, so um, I can get at it. My utensils are here. This is the dairy, and this is dairy utensils. Okay. And then I have parv and okay. meat, which we don't use as much. And, and parv, for those who are, are not familiar with the term, is if something is not dairy and it is not meat, it has a different classification, which is called parv, which means it's neutral. What's an example of parv? Eggs, right? Okay. Vegetables, fruits, th th things of that nature, fish. Everything else has a de designation, basically a designation of dairy or meat and dairy and meat must be separated yeah. but they all get blended dairy and parv okay meat and parv okay so i have to do a lot of planning and yeah. i have recipes about that deep on a single page where i bring with me so that i can cook whatever we need i'm lucky that i have a two well sink so that I can use one for dairy, one for meat. Okay. So I have three burners, so I can make whatever I, I need to here. And I have blue is dairy, green is parv, and the red is meat. The um, We have a microwave. Oh yeah. Okay. And so, um, convection microwave. Great for making popcorn, by the way. <laughs> keep some pots and pans in here. I noticed that the burner runs real hot, so I keep this in between to tone down the temperature. My freezer, I have, uh, this is a five cubic feet ten, refrigerator ten, ten, freezer. Ten, ten cubic ten, feet. Ten cubic, ten cubic feet. feet. Okay. A lot of things I make up before I go and I mark them what they are and if they're dairy or meat then that is a toaster oven and I can bake in there so I put things in uh, uh, 8 by 8 and I can cook in there I also have um, a meat one so we yeah, switch them out according to what we need. Dairy. We're, we're now all the time carrying dairy and meat. So we just switch them out. The cab always serves as a big storage area for the bigger appliances. And the table, we always have um, either dishes or um, paper. So um, we use the table without a cover. I just um, have separate wash cloths, mm. dish cloths, uh, dish towels. And so I wash my items, whatever is dirty, dry them and put them away right away. Okay. So that I don't have to worry about mixing anything up. For people that keep a kosher home, this I think is not as difficult uh, as, as it sounds to the uninitiated <laughs> because they're already living the experience. Now all they're doing is transferring to a much smaller venue and learning to adjust 
and go without when necessary. Some some things are just not that important, and if you don't have it, you don't have it. But um, part, when we get down to the cooking, I don't know where that fits in. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kosher products on almost every grocery shelf. You don't know it, but we know it because they carry little symbols that we look for. The average consumer could care less, right? That takes care of a lot of requirements, but when you get into specialty items, such as meats and poultry, those definitely have to be strictly kosher, and they're not found in a lot of supermarkets that are situated in an area where they don't have a Jewish population because the meats are more expensive and people, if they're not Jewish, they would just walk by when they see the prices. Kosher meat is very expensive. So we ran into that on our travels from time to time, but it was nothing that, I mean, she, she does a lot of improvising. We take whatever we can for frozen foods and we work down that inventory until we get to an area where we think there might be a kosher section in a supermarket. Oftentimes there is not, and that's our problem. But we always have enough food in here that we can make. Spaghetti goes a long way a lot of time. <laughs> carry a lot of dried macaroni products. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. These are very easy. Okay. Uh, I can make sauce and put them in the container, spaghetti sauce, and put them in containers in the freezer. And the eight by eights really stack up very nicely. But it's but you've two, got plenty two of levels. Okay. So I can stack up my eight by eights in there. And Sabbath, Shabbos, we usually eat meat. A lot of times we have fish. We make do. We always have a starch, a vegetable and a meat or a fish dish or a poultry dish. And we use crock pots a lot. Yes. She cooks okay. the primary Friday night meal. First, I'm backing up half a second about Shabbos. The Sabbath, it's called Shabbos or Shabbat, as, okay. they, as they say. There are electric restrictions, electricity restrictions. The restrictions make people think that we live in the dark. We don't live in the dark. The restrictions are you cannot initiate electricity. You can't flip a switch. You can't oh, okay. turn a button um, to start an electric stove. But if it's on before the Sabbath starts, you're fine. Oh, so then a crock pot is wonderful. Yeah, a crock pot is, a crock pot is perfect. Yeah. And there you are, can't use liquids unless you put it on. That's, yeah. That's, okay. li liquid, liquids create a problem on the Sabbath if they're cold, you, you, we, we have rules where you really can't take a cold liquid and put it into a hot crock pot because that can be construed as cooking. Okay. Right? Oh, okay. But if you put it in before the Sabbath starts and you let it sit uh, overnight, then that's fine. And we do fine. this all the time. So, so I don't use a milk-based um, soup or cream-based soup because it, 36 hours is too long mm -hmm. for that to mm -hmm. sit. But a matzo ball soup or something, you know, with a, a thinner... Minest a, minestrone soup. soup. Okay. Uh, like barley mushroom soup, lentil soup. A lot of soups I can put in the crock pot and have them on... Um, in the summer, I make a lot of salads, mm -hmm. like macaroni salad or something like that. And that way I could have it in the refrigerator and I don't have to worry about heating it. Yeah, you're ready to go. And we have a bread called challah. I make that usually once a month and we use three rolls and I make rolls because a whole loaf of bread is too much for the <laughs> two of us. So, um, yeah, the, the rolls, the challah is, because it's bread, bread it's very significant. It was used in, in the Holy Temple as part of services. So it, there's a lot of sanctification to bread. 
and to wine, all of which we take with us. And she makes enough for us to eat on Friday night and again on Saturday for lunch and for the afternoon meal if we're having one. In, in observance of not generating electricity, a lot of these units, ours included, have two motion sensors. We have a motion sensor on the step by the door and a motion sensor on the floor in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. At night, you would activate that. Mm -hmm. You can't do that on the Sabbath. So to alleviate that problem, I, ju I just cover it with tin foil and masking tape, all right? And then it doesn't go on and oh, on. Yeah. So these are all yeah. the little things. We also have on the door, we have what is called mezuzahs. Mezuzah is a Hebrew word translated into English means doorpost. So it says in the Bible that you should put this on your doorpost of your home. And what it is, some people think it's a good luck charm. It isn't. It's not intended to be a good luck charm. It's a reminder that we have a Jewish home. It's a reminder that we have a creator higher than us and that this is not our house, it's his. And that we need to behave uh, and act accordingly in our lives. So we put that on the door and that is a requirement as I found out when we before we headed out to Utah last year, if you're going to live in this for more than 30 days, then you are required to have a mezuzah on on the door. So we were gone for six months, that, uh, six weeks rather, was six months, yeah, <laughs> six weeks. Uh, so that covered that, and we we just leave it there, and that's just a religious requirement. That is wonderful. And yeah. we keep an wow. arm going from Friday night until the Sabbath is over Saturday night and the times switch according to the sun. We're on a lunar calendar. We have to have everything on before the Sabbath starts. And so that if you want a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or um, whatever you might want hot water for, you don't have to turn the faucet on. It's all in the yeah. urn. We have a big yeah. urn, oh, okay. which replaces that toaster oven because we can't use the toaster yeah. oven on the Sabbath and you always have plenty of hot water. So, and that goes from before sunset, Friday, till after sunset, Saturday. And at the conclusion okay. of the Sabbath, we have a, um, following the evening service, we have a, um, it's called Havdalah. It's a ceremony that lasts two, three, four minutes where we light candle, we say prayer, we have wine, we say a prayer, and we have spices, we say a prayer. They all have significance. And when we're done with that, the Sabbath is over, and then it's time to get back to we the, can turn the regular the lights on, We anything. can watch the dishes it's, if it's, there it's are any back dishes. back to a regular yeah. routine. And then you do it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Incredible. that's it in a long nutshell. I want to thank Jay and Hilda. I learned a lot, and I hope you have too. Um, it's been fascinating to, to listen to how you live a kosher diet and how it works for you and how it works can work for, every, for anybody. If you have any questions at all, these two are the experts, but leave them in the comments and we will ask them the answers so we get the answers correct. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next week. Bye. 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 When we heard our rigging wouldn't be delivered until Christmas of 2023, we decided to see what we could tow with our Chevy Bolt, launching our solar electric trailer journey. We have a lot to learn, and we're sharing what we discover along the way. We've added solar panels to our A-Liner Scout pop-up trailer, preparing us for doing the same on a bigger trailer when the Rivian arrives. Join us by subscribing now.